Hi everyone and welcome along. Now before I tell you what we're painting today, you need to make sure that you're watching on Friday because we've got a very exciting announcement about my next watercolour retreat. But for today we're going to paint a loose watercolour autumn landscape, nice and simple, lots of lovely trees using nice wet on wet techniques. So grab your paints and let's get started. Right, so I've got this large um, pointed round brush. It's the same kind of style as the rest of these brushes, but it's just on a much larger scale and it's a size 12 uh, Pro Art Connoisseur brush and I sell it in my shop actually so you can get your hands on this and it's just really fantastic sometimes if you want a little bit more control than a mop brush but you're still doing um, loose watercolour uh, scenes or washes and things. Um, I've just woken up Moon Glow in my palette uh, Payne's grey, um, a bit of sap green and a bit of burnt sienna. I want to create a very very dilute almost invisible scene with my large brush so I've just got it wet and it's got a little bit of colour on it at the moment but it, that's okay and what I'm going to do is I'm trying to create a backdrop for my autumnal scene. Um, my paper is my usual cold pressed and I have taped it all down and what I'm doing is I am just making these sort of pointy shapes to create a, a vague sort of pine tree in the distance and just sort of by sort of dabbing the brush down maybe getting the tiniest bit of sap green in there but essentially I don't want a lot of colour going on um, but these colours are perfect for what I do want and I just want to create a, a sort of world I suppose um, and maybe a little bit of a, a fleck of a splash of the brush maybe get a little bit more colour in there a bit more moon glow a few splashes up and down that's nice yeah happy with that now that's going to dry so much lighter than what it is at the moment and it's very light at the moment anyway so I am just going to go in with just that, the tiniest bit more colour it's not a lot but I want to create that sense of the the trees in the distance but we are going to let that dry 100% now and then we can add our next layers. So we've got a nice big blob now. Um, <laughs> so now I'm going to create a little bit of a, a scene with, a, with my pencil. So I'm trying to create a bit of a, a path. There's my path there and it's sort of going up a bit here. And I'm going to put in a few tree trunks so I think I have my main tree here and I like to sort of place in the tree trunk and then just a few branches but not too much and one a sort of higher one here and then maybe something a bit sort of lower down on the on the path here and then just a few smaller tree trunks there. But we're not going to paint those tree trunks just yet. I don't need my rubbers actually either for the moment. We're going to paint in some lovely autumn trees and leaves and things. And we're going to build up the next layer of this scene. So for autumn colours, I've got, what have I got? cadmium orange here and I'm just uh, waking all these up with my size 6 brush cadmium red I've got alizar and crimson when I'm doing um, autumn leaves I, my colours often sort of get dropped into one another but I'm not too worried about it um, yeah alizar and crimson and then also you need you need sort of lighter brighter tones like cadmium yellow um, a bit of yellow ochre as well will be lovely and then burnt sienna is fantastic because it's such a rich warm brown 
I'm going to start to paint in um, some clouds of colour for some of my trees. So I am using the size 6 brush, starting with my lighter colours first. Nice and colourful and vibrant, but also rather wet as well. And now I'm going to bring in some cadmium orange. And I'm purposefully leaving little gaps here and there. Because I want to make sure that my trees have some space for branches. So I've painted that one in. I'm going to paint this. Oh, which one shall I do next? I think, no, what I'll do, because I want to make sure that things have a bit of time to dry, but also that there's a bit of a a bit of a bleed and a blend. It's um it's one of the interesting things about watercolour. It's all about the the choices you make really with how things are gonna gonna dry and whether they want them to bleed into one another or not. But whilst I'm just thinking about that, I'm gonna take a slightly smaller brush and I'm now going to just place in some burnt sienna tones just in sort of the lower sections of this here. And I'm just not fully going into this section here because I've got a tree there. And I think what I'll do whilst I'm waiting and deciding is I will sort of create my little path on the ground as well. Because what I want to do down here is also build up some colour. So I'm going to start with my yellow. I'm using a size 2 brush, by the way. And I'm just sort of building in the colour, a few flecks of the orange, and then we'll have the pathway leading down as well. Now we've got all these colours, but what I'm also going to do is I'm going to bring in some darker tones some much more concentrated versions of the first washes we created. So I've got moon glow here because of course down on the forest floor there's going to be a whole lot more darkness going on. I'm very much sort of flicking the brush around and sort of creating little shapes and I mean look at that wonderful sweep with that colour there. I think one of the wonderful things about autumn painting is to embrace the sort of the energy of the colours that you have in these little pieces. That's looking really nice. And then I might just take a, a larger wet brush, just draw that colour right down to the edge of our, of our sort of blob. And splatter in just a few slightly stronger, darker tones. That's nice. That's nice. I've got a tiny little drop of water there. Just blot that off. And now it's time to pop in our main tree. So I'm going to place this one just sort of over the top of that previous one and you'll see in our final stage where we put in our detail and things just how we sort of allow the trees to differentiate from one another I'm using my size uh, 6 brush again. I'm just having a really fun time to be honest. If you've always sort of felt like you want to have a go at loose watercolour styles but always feel a little bit unsure of how to do it, well 
I've just always found trees are really, really great for experimenting with because they're these wonderful sort of clouds of colour. And then, as you'll see in the last section, we can put in just a little bit of structure to make them less like pure blobs here and actually like something quite, quite beautiful. So I'm just going to let that dry a little bit and then we'll place in our last tree and then we can do the final stage with all the detail when it really comes together. Right, this is still not 100% dry but it's getting there and so I'm going to place in the last of my little trees and I'm going to bring in some more alizar and crimson for this one. I just want there to be a just a slight difference. There we go, I'm just getting that in there. And a little bit of that darker tone with some burnt sienna. It's just always good to create your autumn trees with variation in the shape because autumn trees often uh, are in like a, a constant state of change of the decay of the autumn leaf and the change of the colour. So I've just popped in a bit of moon glow in there as well. And we'll just add a little bit more darkness in the bottom there. Okay, so we now need all of this to dry 100%. And then we are going to paint in our tree trunks and just little sort of faint bits in the distance, things like that. And it's all gonna come together. This is all lovely and dry now. And so it means we can get on with the final part of the piece where it all comes together. I need a really concentrated, deep dark bark branch colour. And I like the idea of moon glow combined with burnt sienna. Maybe a little bit of Payne's Grey. Payne's Grey is, is a really good concentrated colour. Oh, I'll get that little bit of green in, that's okay. Um, whereas Moon Glow seems to need a bit more encouragement to get really thick and dark. Anyway, I think a size zero brush. Oh, I always get such a kick when I see De Winton Paper Co. on these brushes. If you didn't know, um, we've now, uh, we're working in partnership with Pro Art. So the brushes I've always loved, I've now got my name on and I'm just so excited. So if you, if you buy the brushes from me in my Etsy shop, you get that too. Anyway, right, let's start with one of these then. So I've got size zero brush and what I'm gonna do is I am going to paint this trunk in and the idea is, is that I use the splatters as ways in which to sort of paint around and create my branches as if they are just in there holding all the leaves. And it's a really satisfying, fun way of turning very loose watercolour into something rather beautiful. Um, I often use the rigger brush. Um, to be honest, I probably will as soon as I start getting into really thin, thin branch territory. But for the moment, I'm just still painting in. I'm not entirely sure what kind of trees these are at this point, I'm sure you can all sort of have some thoughts on that but essentially the way we're we're doing it is we're just building it by thinking like how far does that go and then maybe just traveling with the brush And, and sort of travelling along each branch. 
like that. So that's why we leave these little gaps. And yeah, we're just going to keep keep going. And the other thing that I am doing is I'm some of these branches are sort of going a bit further than the than the leaves go, and that's because we can always afterwards add some more branches in, uh, some more leaves in. So that's looking really nice. Um, but what I want to do now is just to dilute that mix just that little bit, and I want to place in more. more branches or more trunks I suppose just sort of simply I don't want to sort of have too much going on and if some of them sort of feel like they need to have a bit of sort of leaf on them, then I'm just sort of taking a, a slightly sort of dilute warm colour. Oh, well, I when I say warm, I mean sort of shadowy, don't I? And I can just place that in just a bit in the background for some. But the other thing here uh, that we can do is I want to sort of show that this tree sits in front of that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some sort of autumn leaf colour and I'm going to do a sort of wobbly outline there and then I'm going to clean my brush off and just with wet colour, wet colour, I just mean water really, um, I can just do that um, and maybe you could maybe drop in a little bit of a little bit more darkness into it if you wanted just to really differentiate but that's a great way of doing it and then I can just take some of my lighter colors and drop in one or two little extra dabs on some of these little lines that have, that have made their way out to the branches it's just a nice way of sort of getting the, the tree just looking a little bit more finessed and whilst it's a very loose watercolour piece just a little bit more realistic. And then once we've done this we can Peel away the masking tape and see what we've got underneath. But I think this is a really nice way of doing a little loose watercolour autumn landscape when you're feeling just a little bit unsure. So what we oops, what we can do is wait for that to dry 100 percent and rub out the pencil and then we'll have a beautiful piece. And there we have our lovely autumn landscape. That would make a really nice card, I think, or just a really cool little artwork. Uh, maybe even a journal uh, month front page, whatever you like. Uh, it's just a really great way to unwind and enjoy the changing season and all the wonderful colors. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a huge thank you to our patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And of course, if you never want to miss another video, then hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell and we'll see you again next time. Bye.